We just had a glimpse at expectation for discrete random variables, and now, of course, we have to look at expectation for random variables with densities. And here is the definition. So this this video is going to be basically the parallel of the previous one. The expectation of a random variable x with density lowercase f is the x well we it's the expected value, we write it as e of x, and it's the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the value little x times f of x dx. When this integral is well defined. And Again, I haven't defined well defined for an integral, so we will postpone that and come back to it. Otherwise, the expectation does not does not exist. So, as before when we were dealing with random variables with densities, we had these integrals and I made the disclaimer that technically this is a that this is integrating with this is a Lebesgue integral integrating with respect to Lebesgue measure but you don't need to freak out because most of the time it will turn out that you can think of it as just a standard you know, standard fair calculus Riemann type integral and do a think to do a, an improper integral where you take the limits and everything will Usually everything will work out okay. But remember that technically it is a Lebesgue integral. Okay, so that's the definition. And in keeping with our previous video, we will now do an example. So if x is uniform, nice simple case, uniform on the interval from a to b, so remember this has a PDF, a density, which looks something like this. Let me draw it. Let me do that over. So maybe that's the that's A, that's B, and then this is 1 over B minus A, this value. It's constant here and it's zero everywhere else. That's the PDF. And the expectation of x we can evaluate. So, well, I, re I won't rewrite the definition, but you can see that this is going to be, since it's zero everywhere else, we can just integrate from a to b. And it's going to be x divided by the value of the PDF, which is just this constant. And it turns out, in this nice little case, since this is a a, a finite interval, and we have a nice continuous function that the Riemann integral applies, and therefore it equals the Lebesgue integral. So let's just do a standard Riemann integral here. We can just quickly compute this integral. So it's x squared over 2 evaluated from a to b, and of course that's just times 1 over 2, b squared minus a squared. It's a difference of squares, so it factors b minus a times b plus a. The b minus a cancels, and we get a plus b divided by 2. So the expectation of a uniform random variable on the interval from a to b is naturally enough smack dab in the middle. And so this in this at least in this little case it fulfills our ex our, our expectation that the expectation should be the average the average sort of value. 
So that's nice. And now let me come back to this this well definedness thing here and clarify that. So well defined integral, what does that mean? So the problem is basically the same as before. The problem is basically this that you know you could have this thing could be when you broke it up into two parts you could have a, a part which was minus infinity and a part which was infinity and then that would be you know undefined so we'll do something very similar to the discrete case we'll break up the integral so we'll define a let me scroll up so you can see it so that's that's the thing we're working with we're going to break it up into a negative part so this is the negative part and b is going to be the positive part because remember f of x is always non-negative so since x is is not negative this is this is non-negative since x is negative here or uh, or non-positive at least this is less or equal to 0 so we define these two quantities a and b and we say that so The integral, we're just specializing to the case of a, an expectation here. You could generalize this to uh, uh, more general integrals. But in this case, we say that the integral, this integral, is well defined if either A or B is finite just like in the discrete case. The discrete case we broke it up into a sum over negative parts and positive parts and this is just the same thing. And, lem and uh, uh, we can illustrate this once again with an example. So this is going to be an example So first, uh, well, uh, I'm not going to give an example of this, but you can modify this example to show that the expectation may exist and be infinite. So it might exist and be equal to infinity or minus infinity. But we're going to give an example that, so that, but we're going to give an example that the expectation might not exist. So this is a note. Might not exist. Might fail to exist. So this this problem can happen. It might not be well defined. So let random variable x. We're gonna we're gonna see a nice example of a new type of distribution. So a Cauchy distribution named, of course, after the fantastic mathematician of the 1800s, Cauchy, French mathematician, great mathematician, terrible person. And this is defined by a PDF, 1 over pi times 1 plus x squared. So this may remind you of in the previous video when we were looking at discrete random variables we had a distribution that looked like 1 over k squared times some constant and when x is big here this is going to be this is going to behave roughly like 1 over x squared and so it's going to be it's we're going to have basically the same problem as before it's not going to integrate it the integral is going to be infinite on the positive part and on the negative part. So the expectation is just this integral x over well it, it should be this integral but it's not going to exist so let me put a little question mark here. So it should be this if it exists and uh, now for this, technically, you know, 
insert my caveat technically again that this is a Lebesgue integral but what we can do is uh, for intuition at least so for intuition uh, for intuition let's pretend it's a that, that, that we can treat this as a improper integral so let's just look at the part so we can break this up into different parts integrating over different parts of the line so let's look at the part where we're integrating from 1 to infinity this thing and we could ignore the constant pi for now since this is this is going to be infinite I claim that this is this is infinite uh, well let me be precise here we're going to integrate over to up to some constant a and I claim that the limit so the improper integral will be taking the limit as a goes to infinity and I claim that that is that's is infinite and uh, that will so intuitively at least that would demonstrate that if we broke if we broke this up into an integral from minus infinity to minus one plus this part plus this part that the last part would be minus infinity well, well let me say at least the first part would be infinity that's exactly this well intuitively speaking it would be it would be this because this is uh, not actually a Lebesgue integral but intuitively speaking this would be infinity intuitively speaking this would be minus infinity because x would be negative and so therefore we would get this thing which is like a minus infinity plus some constant plus infinity and this would be undefined so you can verify this uh, let me just out let me just give you the key step here first this is greater or equal to the integral from 1 to a of x divided by 2x squared because 1 if 1 is is less or equal to x then that implies that 1 plus x squared is less or equal to 2x squared and uh, so you can check that little inequality there and if we integrate this of course the x's cancel and we get 1 over x, right? x is cancel, pull out the 1 half, and this is 1 half log x, 1 to a, 1 half log a, and that goes to infinity because log goes to infinity as, as a goes to infinity. So if we were to do this improper integral, well, we just did the imp well, we didn't do the, this integral, we, we lower bounded this integral by something which goes to infinity and therefore this thing must also go to infinity. So intuitively uh, we, we checked that this, this expectation does not exist.